Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Um, I want to thank my subscribers for subscribing and thank you so much. It means so much. Click the like button and please subscribe and that means a lot and it will help my channel. Uh, Biden is with Bass, B-A-S-S. What a moment for the leader of the free world to show up in Southern California. President Joe Biden landed Wednesday at Los Angeles International Airport on a West Coast swing originally designed mostly around political fundraising. But with the city's political establishment reeling from the disclosure this week of racist statements made by city council members, the visit took on a broader significance, redirecting the city's attention to national Democrats circling the wagons. Biden was greeted on the tarmac by Mayor Eric Garcetti, with whom he has had a close relationship, and U.S. Representative Karen Bass, whom he considered as a running mate in 2020 and has endorsed as Garcetti's successor. successor. At a mid-morning event at a dusty construction site near the Veterans Hospital, where workers are building a new Metro Line station, for the expanded purple line, Biden touted, T-O-U-T-E-D, tooted, or touted, the benefits of his infrastructure program, taking the podium by thanking Garcetti and Bass and referring to them as Mr. Mayor and soon-to-be Mrs. Mayor. Afterward, Biden, Bass, and Country Supervisor Hilda Salas made a short stop at the Tacos, 1986, near UCLA, picking up an order of uh, quesadillas, 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 I guess, and tacos from the tiny shop, <laughs> quesadillas and tacos from the tiny shop. There, I'll get it. After a week that has highlighted tension between Lat Latino and black political leaders in Los Angeles, the tableau conveyed a carefully crafted image of unity underscoring how much Biden has become enmeshed in the polis, politics and problems of this city. The visit along with Biden's call earlier this week for resignations of the local politicians implement, implicated in the racist remarks reflected the influence of the city and how its scandals and successors can echo across the country. I would argue New York always a company occupies presidents and so do major cities from Chicago to Houston, Garcetti said in an interview this week. Whether it's moral moments like this, it reflects that Los Angeles is important, he said. It's not just in moments of crisis, it's also in moments of opportunity. Why do you think that there are so many cabinet members that have come out here and toured the port of Los Angeles, including the vice president? the president, that has, hasn't, to my knowledge, happened in Savannah. Biden's involvement with Los Angeles politics follow a pattern set by the previous two Democratic presidents since Bill Clinton won California in 1992, becoming the first Democrat to carry the state in a generation. Democratic presidents have carefully wooed the city's political leadership and its voters. Well, that's nice. <clears throat> that is very, very nice. Biden can't quit L.A. in his complex politics, even as racist audio leak rocks the city. And what they said about the Republicans was terrible. Absolutely terrible. But, oh well. Now, let's see about this one here. Uh, I wanted to do this one before, and I forgot about it. Yes, I did. <clears throat> Move this down. <clears throat> okay. I guess we won't do that one right now. So, let's try this one. And Democrats... Leaders accused of money funneling. Again. The founders of the left, left wing o Occupy Democrats 
have been accused of funneling money from their political action committee to themselves. Last Sunday, Hamish Mitchell of African Wildlife Adventures accused Omar and Raphael Rivero, R-I-V-E-R-O, Rivero, the founders of the activist group of mismanaging donations they've collected. Mitch Mitchell tweeted that while the occupied Democrats election fund run by Omar Rivero raised seven hundred and ninety seven thousand dollars in twenty one and twenty two, the PAC spent nothing on federal candidates, but it did spend five hundred and seventy seven thousand on fundraising consultants. <clears throat> and just who are the fundraising consultants? According to the FEC filings that Mitchell provided, one of the consultants, Blue Deal LLC, was paid two hundred twenty thousand from Occupy Democrats Election Fund. Blue Deal LLC sells campaign materials and promotional products to Democrat campaigns and progressive organizations, and the people who run Blue Deal LLC are Omar and Raphael Riverol. Mitchell called out Omar Riverol, asking him to explain the payment. Initially, Riverol replied to Mitchell's tweet, arguing that if Mitchell understood the time and effort that goes into making viral memes, maybe he would respect our work more. However, this reply prompted to much ridicule, mockery, Riverol eventually deleted it. <coughs> Excuse me. Their viral memes, M-E-M-E-S, memes, aren't worth a plump, plug nickel. For example, last week when President Biden searched the crowd for Congresswoman Jackie Walorski, who was killed in a car accident two months ago, Occupy Democrats tweeted their disgust that Jackie Walorski, who is dead, disrespected President Biden by not showing up at the White House event and noted that she couldn't even be reached for comment about her act of defiance. Yes, that's because she's gone. She's deceased. You think of making viral memes uh, really did take a lot of time and effort. Occupy Democrats would have noodled out ahead of time that Jackie Walorski wasn't there because she had been dead for two months. It was only after countless people relied to the tweet informing them Walorski was dead the occupied Democrats finally deleted it. The bigger scandal here is that anyone would give these nitwits a single dime. In an interview the Net, uh, Newsweek last Tuesday, Rafael Rivero claimed a clerical heir was to blame for people jumping to conclusions about occupied Democrats' finances. To quote a viral meme, sure, Jan. <clears throat> Boy, I tell you, you just don't know. You really just don't know. It sure is getting to be a mess, either way you want to look at it. Mess, 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 all the time. It just don't make sense to me. And it probably never will. And I'm sure I'm not alone. You know, I'm putting all these videos away. Now, Mr. Trump, bless his heart. Well, Trump's taken case over classified documents to Supreme Court. Okay. On Tuesday, former President Donald Trump's legal team filed an emergency request with the U.S. Supreme Court asking them to return seized documents to an appointed special master to review the privilege exceptions. Now, I hope I haven't already done this. A lot of this stuff is repeated over and over in other articles. And I keep thinking, oh my God, I already did that. I already did that. <laughs> Lower court has allowed the Justice Department to continue assessing more than a hundred of the seized documents in their criminal investigation against Trump. If the Supreme Court decides to block that decision, as requested by Trump, then the documents will be returned to the special master for privilege review. So, the documents that were taken when the FBI raided Trump's Mar-a-Lago residence in Florida to search for documents illegally taken from the White House, and that's what they're going for now. Trump wants them back, and I can't blame him. 
because one of them is his will. <laughs> Remember that video I did? If you saw it, you know, he said, boy, some people are really going to be upset if they find, <laughs> find that will. <laughs> his family, maybe, or friends, or whatever, <laughs> thinking they might get when he's deceased. It may never happen now. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't laugh about it. I shouldn't. Oh, my God. As the case ensued, Trump's legal t teams successfully argued, <laughs> never mind, that a special master should be appointed to review the seized records for any items that might be covered by executive privilege or other exceptions. A special master, who was recommended by Trump, and approved by prosecutors then took possession of the documents. The records turned over to the special master included more than 100 documents being used by the Justice Department in their criminal investigation of Trump. On September 21st, the 11th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals overturned that decision, allowing prosecutors to continue using the documents to pursue their criminal investigation without a review from the special master first. In Tuesday's Supreme Court filing, Trump's legal team called the Justice Department's lawsuit an attempt to criminalize a document management dispute and now vehemently, vehemently objects to a transparent process that provides much needed oversight. In an interview given after the filing with the Supreme Court, Trump echoed the sentiments of his lawyers. It's a weaponization by the DOJ, Trump said, and I think it's just something that has to stop. So we fight that battle. We think we're doing very well in that battle, he added, and I think the public agrees with us because you know better than anybody. My poll numbers are higher now than they've ever were. You go, Trump. Trump also stressed during the interview that he felt he was being treated much differently than his political prode predecessors when they left the White House. Because a lot of them took documents they shouldn't have took. And nothing has been done about that. And they still got the documents. So it's just like I said in another video that I did tonight. You know, why aren't they or were investigated? It's just not real to me. It's not real whatever and I'd still like to know how they knew where those documents was so somebody must have snuck into Trump's house when he was on vacation gone did some snooping maybe they weren't locked up as tight as Trump thought they were they got their nose in there and they're the ones that blew the whistle to Biden or Biden set somebody in there. That's a little bit better uh, conceivement there, isn't it? I can conceive that. Yes. Okay, people. Well, that, this will be my last video for this evening. Okay. I got a lot of work ahead of me this coming uh, morning. And uh, my desktop is pretty well clean, so I got to fill it back up again. <laughs> but God bless you. Stay safe, stay well, and remember, you are a blessing, and God bless you.